we can tease from this lineup of six wines. Let's get into it. All right. <laughs> We're back. My back hurts. Uh, the, the, the theme today is guess the region. And I've been given a bit of a hint, uh, but I don't, it's a helpful hint, but it's not helpful in the sense that I'm gonna get any of these right. I'm just here to be a pretty face. Thank you so much, I love my fans. Fruity, sweet, like you got lychees and berries and all that sort of stuff, which is leaning me towards something Pinot Gris or Sav Blanqui. Off to the races. Yep, it's 100% Moscat or Dusty. Uh, and I love this other one. It's so much fun. It's playful. It's low alcohol. It's sweet. Yes, it is absolutely sweet, but it's got acidity. It's got the bubbles to kind of refresh the palate. Really bright, super delicious. It's just sugar. It's just sugar. That's just sugar water. That's just lolly water. Simple syrup is what's in there. It's not bad. Honestly, it's not bad. It's just really, really sweet. This tastes like a fruit box. Um, it's yummy. Uh, how much would I pay for it? I reckon it's gonna be expensive. I reckon that, that's actually really yummy. I could drink so much of this. Uh, I want a dozen of it and it is German Riesling. And I'd hope to pay no more than $30. Um, it's a banger. It is an absolute banger. Love this style, always fun, um, always a crowd pleaser. Just something different, something you never really reach for out of the fridge, at least, you know, probably the people I generally hang around the most with aren't really reaching for this all that much, but it's just so much fun. It's just like, it's what a brilliant style of wine that's just so unique, absolutely brilliant. One number two. Um, okay, this is, looks less watered down than wine number one. I'm not, having tasted that, I'm not surprised that that's the way it looks because it, it, yeah, it just tastes like grape juice. Like if you press grapes down, that's what you're gonna get. Good acid, really nice and salty, really clean. There's no oak here. Very, very fun little table white. Uh, and that's what I think this variety is. I think this is our nice, uh, which is, you know, the most, it is a very beige, grape variety, but that's kind of what you want from some wines. And Italian whites really do that uh, really strong, is that some Italian whites, Fiano, bless up. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. There's not heaps going on. Texturally, there's not heaps. It's a little bit acidic, but there's not heaps of other texture, like it's not like grippy or it's just, it's just there. Not bad, not bad at all. Um, it's a little bit tart, which I don't mind. I mean, everything's gonna be tart coming from that Ribena that we were just drinking. Uh, nutty as well. Um, so it's nutty, dry finish. Where could this be from? Is it New World or is it Old World? I reckon it's New World. South African Chardonnay. It's sort of nutty. Yeah, if, it, if I hadn't got my good, tip, uh, good insider knowledge, I probably would have gone with an Australian wine here, to be honest. But what's kind of like South, what's kind of like Australia? South Africa. So we'll go with South African wine on this. We'll probably pay, I don't want to pay again more than 30 bucks because there's just, you know, it's a, it's a cannon fodder little, you know, easy drinker table, friendly share wine. It's like, don't, don't muck around with it too much. Just enjoy the ride. And don't, yeah, don't, don't think about it too much. This is, this is just, Catch up with your friends. Talk to your friends about their lives. Don't talk about the wine with your friends. You know, that's what other wines are for, not this wine. This is this is summer barbecue, bring around a grandma's Christmas lunch kind of thing. Great. Wine number three. This is a lighter colored red wine with a kind of faded rim, which is, uh, if we're talking about Northern Italy, the staple. It's just, what variety is it? Could be Barbera, Nebbiolo, could be I doubt it's Dolcetto, it's not quite deep enough. One number three, it's red. Ooh, that is bright, brother. That is some juicy shit. Bro, that smells redonkulous with a capital duh. Yeah, really leaning into that kind of tobacco-y, earthy, savory thing. Really fresh red cherry there as well. It's really backing it up. And the kind of tannins are really, really lovely and like subtle, but like, you know, really tight ruffles of corduroy that kind of just frame the wine, which is really beautiful. I think this is a really good little like modest take on Nebbiolo. What is that, dude? 
that's hectic. It's got this, like, it's so bright and juicy on the nose, but then there's so much, like, suede tannin and texture. It's, it's nice, it's nice, but it's just so, like not on the same page from nose to mouth. They don't match up and that's given me the, it's given me the ick. A little bit older in theory, so there's a good chance that there's not that many of them left, which either means that it was unpopular, so it's cheap because they're trying to sell it off, or it's gonna be in high demand because you can't make a 2011 wine in 2023, so. Number four. Deeper, darker, redder. So I reckon we're going down more the Barbera or Dolcetto path here. It's, it's, I don't know, it's giving potpourri. I don't know about this. But also like blackberry jam and potpourri. Someone's just made the wackiest cake filling you've ever seen. Mmm, smells really vibrant. Which, you know, given my little diagnosis of it being a, um, more nectary look. That sort of fits with where we're going. Um, Old World, New World. Much lighter on the front of the palette than wine number three. So I'm not instantly heading down the road of like Shiraz or Syrah, but then it's got this real bite at the back end. Like it finishes quite hot and quite fiery. Uh, juicy, juicy red fruits on the palette and a lovely little suggestion of tannin that's just kind of there gently wrapping its arms around the wine. It's kind of just like a nice little, little frame. It's yeah, just potpourri and raspberries, but not, not fresh raspberries, like really stewed the fuck down. It's the sort of wine that I should have been drinking earlier this year before my appendix exploded and I couldn't get on overseas travel flight. Um, that's gonna be 55 bucks and it's going to be three bottles of my time. <laughs> My number five. Every time I lean over there, I lose a little bit more of my will to live. Again, this is sort of smelling like an old person wine. I might be on to something with that angle. Meaty, meaty, number one note. Just sort of, sort of weight of the drink on the palate and it gives you this sort of like, I'm drinking something that used to have a face sort of vibe. Man, I really like this. This is fun, this is really playful. Feels like Neb because that tannin is really just but there is that lovely fresh acidity and it's got this like really lovely balsamic strawberry, like raspberry, like jubiness, like, you know, red cherry, cranberry thing. That's really like playful. It's really exuberant and light. It's giving, I'm gonna say it's a, a Syrah. This, this, I might be onto something here, but I might not be, but I might be. It's up in the air. I'm gonna say it's a Syrah. It's spicy, old, juicy rugs like carpets. If I, I don't think I can keep using carpets as a tasting note, but I will, but I don't think I should. Um, but I really, really enjoyed the kind of nouveau aspect to this. I'm gonna go 12, I'm gonna pay 60 bucks for this. Um, we're sorry, this is like a cool little like modern producer just playing in a little bit of a lighter sphere to it. But I really love that youthful cherry kind of thing that's going on here. I think it's really great fun. Um, very, very refreshing, super playful. Um, and I'm really excited by it. And I think I'd drink a lot of it, even in warm weather. I think it might, it might decant it a little bit and kind of soften those tannins a little bit, but so much fun, so much fun. Again, great with food. Wine number six. Make this all make sense. Man, that's just some old smelling, some old smelling stuff. It's just old. That's the only way I can describe it. They all just smell old. Yeah, blueberries and like red cherry and cranberry and flower, like violets and all of these kind of lovely little like herbs and spices and wine that I would only drink when I'm eating, like um, when I'm having like a meat casserole, meat casserole, yeah, a casserole or like a steak or things like that. I reckon that's the ticket. I reckon that's the ticket. Just so beautifully seamless, like the tannin really is like, I've got those kind of lovely black tea, like. Props to the winemaker, they've probably actually done a really brilliant job on, on making a wine of whatever variety this is. It's just, it's just it's not my ting. It's just not up my alley. So now I've got to try through process of deduction, figure out what on earth region all of these wines are from. And I think this might be the hardest bracket I've ever been given because I don't know jack about wine regions. Jack. 
This is a P, this is a Piemonte bracket from uh, the north of Italy. Um, that's what I believe. Piedmont, Ita, um, yeah. Alrighty. La la lady and gentleman, what did we think of this lineup? This was a yarsified lineup, if I do say so myself. And by yarsified, I mean it was not particularly sleigh boots the house down, but not too far off it. I don't think anybody in the world understands what you're saying. I, no, I think a lot of people. The girls do, to be who get yeah. it get it. Yeah, the no, girls who don't. Hundred percent. Uh, I, I think I picked up a little bit of that. I've been watching a fair bit of Drag Race lately, and I feel like some of that language has come through. I'm into the dialects now. Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, to be honest with you, it, there was some real standout like. Sleigh Boots the House moments, if you will, but uh... But because it's December, it was Sleigh Boots the House, S-L-I-E-I-G-H? E-I-G-H? Yeah. Sleigh, Sleigh Boots. Sleigh, Boots as in, you know, house. you know Rudolph? You know, that guy? Sleigh yeah. Stockings the House. Sleigh Stockings the Sleigh House. Sleigh stockings the, stockings the Gingerbread House down. <laughs> well, at least we're festive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Happy holidays. We're dressed festive. <laughs> Yeah, we're wearing yeah. black. We didn't coordinate this, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> but not, maybe not in our attire. All right, wine. Guess the region. I was given a hint from Lockheed because he knew that I was going to be in uh, down, down, Geographically Town. challenged. Yeah. Not geographically challenged, it's a bit much, but definitely I would struggle. So he said, the only hint he gave me was, it's not in Australia. Yeah, he gave me that hint as well. Which because I was, was going to be geographically challenged. I was playing on hard which, mode. <laughs> which, was then, which was then me having to memorise us playing... Um, options. options. Not, not options. Uh, tier list. Oh, tier list. Tier yes. list. Which is how I ended up on what I, on what I ended up on. Yeah. And there were, some, there were some corkers. Yep. And there was some... Um, lots of my tasting notes were just old. Uh, Henry, where did you think it was from? One number one. Thought it was German Riesling, baby. Well, they're all they're all from one region. Huh? They're all, all they're the ones all are from, from one, one place. region. Good news, all these ones from Germany because that's German Riesling, baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lockie, I was saying so many things. You didn't correct me once during that. I was just like, oh, they're all from different countries. What no, the fuck, no, dog? No, 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 no. I asked him the first one. I said, is this multiple regions or is this one region? He said, it's one, so I guess at the end. Yeah. Not Australian, so yeah. a singular region. Yeah. And my guess was Burgundy. France. Uh, well, I've written French more than anything else, so I guess we'll go with France as well. But what, what region in France? South. Yeah. Okay. It's the south of France. Well, the, tell you what, the region I reckon it is, is close to the south of France. There we go. Geographically. It borders France, some would say. It's Germany? No, it's, Damn. Damn, it's Italian. Ah, uh, yep. And the first wine gives it away. We see, yeah, like the sweet acidic thing is very, like, absolute German reasoning thing. I'm sorry, it's Moscato. It is Moscato. Moscato from the north of Italy in I'm Piemonte. Sorry. Moscato Dusty. Actual Moscato. Actual Moscato. I said it's Moscato Giallo. Uh, it is not Moscato Giallo. It is Muscat that Blanc of Petit Grace. That you know of. I know exactly it's Muscat Blanc of Petit That Grace. you know of. <laughs> like, regardless of what, where it's from, what it is, like, what did you guys think of it? Was I fucking love this. Yeah, yum, 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 yum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, I said, it's a bit sweet for me, but Henry's going to devour it. Dude, 100%. Yeah. Give me it's a dozen of them. It's sweetie yum yep. yums. I said super sweet icy pole. Yeah, yeah, hmm. 100%. Absolute fucking breakfast one. Yeah, if you froze that, it would be an excellent icy bowl. Yeah, oh, yes. real good. 100%. Real good. Uh, look, I'm, I'm, I'm confident. Uh, Lockie, what is it? 50, 50 bucks. bucks. I said they were $25 each, yeah. but I'm basing that off Brown Brothers pricing. I still wanted three. I said $70, not bad. I'll pay 70 for a dozen. Am I about to have a prediction? Hey, Moscato d'Asti. From? Bueno. From Asti in Piemonte. Oh, it's Italian. They're all Italian. You said yes. I was close with Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> no, yum. Buy this. I would buy 12. I would prefer a half bottle because they generally come in half bottles and yeah. it's a perfect serve between you and a friend. Yeah. Or you, or if you're you. really sad. Yeah, just you. <laughs> you and Santa. Yeah, and Santa doesn't exist, so just you. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> Sorry, kids, if I you're mean, watching. Kids, you should kids, be watching. Kids. Yeah, yeah. kids. <laughs> Moving right along. Wine number two. Wine number two. It's a fucking Chardonnay. It's a Chardonnay? Yeah, and I think it's from South Africa. Damn! <laughs> but now I'm... Ah, oh, fuck, I'm smelling... I'm smelling more Chardonnay here. I, I didn't smell as much oak as I did in the first time. I smelled less oak first time around. Yeah. Now it's kind of opened up and it's got that like, nice kind of like buttery like honeycomb thing to mm. it which I, I really thought it like. smelled like a sausage roll a sausage roll 
Quite yummy. I thought it was like pretty simple. Like it was pretty straight up and down. Like, you know, just yeah. drink it. Don't really think about I, it. it. Enjoy yourself. It didn't, I wasn't like, what's going on here? This is bonkers. I was like, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. It is. Yeah. So I'll have one. I'll pay 35 bucks for it. I, I, I'd have half a dozen because I like a no think just drink solo white wine and I'd pay mm. 30 bucks as well. Yeah, I said three for 30. So we're all thinking around that 30. sort of 30 yep. ish price point. Lachlan. What do we got? It's, it's a Chardonnay. Hell yeah, brother. Well down. I love being a genius. <laughs> what a turnaround. <laughs> what a turnaround. Uh, I'm the biggest idiot in the world too. I love being a yeah. genius. From is, Barbaresco. Uh, yeah, so this is Dave Fletcher, Australian. He's an Australian. So he boots the house down, Dave Fletcher. Well done. Yeah, the gingerbread house down. Um, so he spits half of his time in Australia and in uh, Italy. Italy, presumably. Yep. yep. <laughs> so he works Not right. South Africa. <laughs> Not South Africa, funnily enough. Um, but yeah, he spits his time in uh, Barbaresco working for a producer called Chiretto. Uh, and then he also got his own little side project for, for this, the Fletcher Chardonnay. And then he's also got a, a local Nebbiolo from Victoria called the Minion, which is fucking great actually Minion. too. Fun. So we love Australians abroad um, and good on you, Dave. Well just to just to confirm, so far I have c correctly guessed both varieties. Both yes. varieties. Yes. yes. Just so you're keeping track at home. Yeah. <laughs> so, I am slaying. Yeah. <laughs> One number three. Yeah. I thought this was Southern Italian. <laughs> <laughs> I went back, baby. I'm certainly Italian. Yeah. I I said it was a Pinot. Mm. I it, it's not. Uh, my so the the, streak okay. is broken. So we'll talk about we'll talk about wine number six when we get to it. Yeah. But they had similarities to me in that wine number three was like eating brand new suede, mm -hmm. and wine number six was like someone's worn suede shoes for six months, then left them in the rain and forced me to eat them. Lucky you can cut to my head like absolutely flogged gazelle trainers if you want to get worn out suede. Yeah, like a dustiness to it almost. Yeah. Mm. Which is sort of like the back of the closet. And then looking at, I, I said that this is from like 2012 or something, just because it looks like it's faded a little bit. Mm. It's got that sort of like, as soon as I smell it being that sort of dusty style yeah. and that sort of color, I was like, all right, I reckon this is a little bit older. Yeah. Um, I also thought it was a Syrah, like heading in that direction because it does have that sort of like yeah. body to it. Like you're saying, like the sort of palette not matching the, like the yeah. palette does taste bigger to me. Mm. Yeah, no, this is like everything like you just said is just like so bang on for the variety I think it is, which is Nebbiolo. Nebbiolo makes a lot of sense now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Super tannic, tannic yeah. grippy, like suede, like corduroy kind of tannins. That's like the, the trademark. Hey, oh, fuck that's yeah. a steal, That's good. That's why brother. I didn't want to drink it too soon. <laughs> <laughs> if it's under $50, it's not bad. Yeah, read the cork, get it. Yeah. Nebbiolo. <laughs> Maretti Nebbiolo. Lange. Yeah. So, really pretty label. Yeah, this is basically mm. a company that buys little uh, vats of uh, wine from all around Italy. They do Chianti, they do, all the, uh, they do like Suave. So it's they don't make it, they're just a company that like brokers really good like juice and sells it off super affordably. Uh, so that's why the, the value here is so fucking good. For 26 bucks, like... Pfft. Yeah. Yeah. No brand. That's a great job. Nah, it's a great example of Italian Neb. Yeah, exactly. That one, if you haven't tried Nebbiolo, this is a great place to start. Mm. Uh, next up, what did we think, team? Your, your granddad's potpourri. Um, I thought that I was betrayed uh, by... <laughs> so, like, when we're doing these tastings, obviously... You, you know, scoundrel, you want. Yeah, obviously there's just one other person in the room and it's the man behind the camera, Lockie. Yeah. So I'm sitting here doing this whole bit about how, like, oh, okay, so, like, I'm eyes closed, I'm drinking this wine, someone says it was made down the road, which country am I sitting in? And I'm just like, France. And then Lockie gasped like I was right. So I was like, <laughs> oh, we're on to something. We're on to something here. I was getting eyebrow raises after every guest. And I'm like, all right. I'm in with the French thing, which is why I said- Man's just suckering him in. He's yeah. so of chaos today. This, the, the nose on this was really reminiscent of the like wines that you would find around in the early 2000s. So this gave me Cab Sav. Nice. Lockie? Lockie? Oh, <laughs> close for 75. Damn, this is up there. It, it can't, Watch it be an Italian it, cup cheddar, I'm going crazy. Cab Sav. Dolcetto. Dolcetto. Really? Damn, I mean, I, I was... Hang on. The company that imported it is called Deja Vu, which is French, 
which means <laughs> technically I'm close enough with that. Yeah, and I said French as well, so I'm we'll taking a win on that, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, that's a really light take on dolcetto. Generally, I expect it to be like really black cherry and rich. Like I smelled that, but I didn't taste it. And to be honest, like like what I like about dolcetto is I don't like paying too much money for it. It should be like 40 bucks mm. max. Like 60-ish bucks is just a little bit too much for me, but oh well, what are you gonna do? Yeah, um, yeah I'd, I'd get two bottles and some change of the Lange Nebbiolo, that's what I'd be doing. Uh, number five. Old, old. Syrah, old. Yeah, I, um, uh, well, well, now I was convinced that they're all gonna be French because Lockie gasped the last one, so I was stuck on that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I said Gamay because I didn't want to say Syrah three times in a row, essentially. Mm. Um, I'm not ready for this. At the current point of my life that I'm in, mm. Yeah. I said, this isn't a wine that's being drunk by 21 year olds in Brunswick. This is being drunk by 65 year olds in the Inman Valley. Hmm, you can see that. And I don't know where the Inman Valley is, but it's the only <laughs> old place I could think of. Might not even be old. I don't know. It's more Haven't... Dale's but sick. No, I just thought this was just like, it was so juicy. It's so pretty. I had it's juicy. So light I had fun, spicy. But it's just got that nice kind of suggestion yeah. of tannin. I said it's spicy really cool. old juicy. Yeah, <laughs> spicy hot juicy, we love that. Um, yeah, I think it's just like so pretty and like fresh strawberries. I was really into it. I wanted a dozen. Mm. Yeah, uh, I, I, wanted, I really liked it. I'll take one. I had three for 38. Oh, okay. I had $85. I had 60. Lucky, what is it? Barbaresco, I do love Barbaresco. Is that what you guessed? No, Nebbiolo. I guess the next one is Barbaresco, but it's, it's Nebbiolo. Um, but yeah, I think this is, I mean, it's a hundred, it's Barbaresco, like, that's probably the 20, right 20, price for the right. 14%, you'll get fucked up on that. Yeah, that's, that's, yep, yeah, that's... Par for the course. That'll do it, that's par for the course for Nebbiolo. Everything's high, high acid, high alcohol, high tannin, mm. high everything. Which is yeah. why I only wanted one. <laughs> yeah, Nebbiolo, the most high. Um, mm. But yeah, uh, I, I really love this. I think it's really delicious. Uh, wine this? number six, the soggy suede Beaujolais from Italy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, this was sick. I, I thought no. this was fucking awesome. I, incorrect. Yeah, this is I awesome. thought this was so offensive. It drew all of the moisture out of my mouth, wicked it away like I was eating cotton wool. It's a wet thing. Why is my mouth dry? Mm. Uh, I mean, like, you know, we, we, we can't all be perfect. My We've response, all got flaws. My you know? response <laughs> opinions to myself, are opinions. My response to myself was that this is probably a really stellar example of this variety, Correct. and I just don't like tannin. Mm. This is yeah, probably, that is exactly it. Yeah, yeah, this is probably a really pristine example of what I thought was a yeah. Beaujolais, and I don't know what a Beaujolais tastes like. Um, but again, I didn't want to say Syrah. Yeah, um, you just want to... I agree with Gemma in the sen like in the sentiment of like what it is tasting like. It is that uh, it, I, I'm not a huge Nebbiolo fan either. Like yeah, make, of course we make Neb here. It's fine, but like you know, I have to say, I have to sell it to people, so it's really good um, for a certain no, group. Not. <laughs> Forget about it. Get next year. Um, for a certain group of people, uh, I'm not. We're not in that certain group of yeah. people. Noah and Brendan absolutely are. You love yeah. that big sort of face melting tannin and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I reckon this might be. If the last one was Barbarossa, I reckon. This is Barolo, mm. uh, and I think it's pretty fucking gangster. So very interested to see what it is, Lucky. Judy Vara Barolo. Nailed it. Yeah, this is about right. This is 2019. This is pretty pretty bang on. Uh, speaking of uh, of Brendan, he he worked at this winery and made this wine in a, a, a few vintages ago. Not this particular wine, uh, but you know, oh. like Judy Vara is one of the the great estates in in northern in Piemonte, and this is just like this is the this is the entry level at 109 dollars. Um, like, just... Wine of the lineup. I mean, look, I you know what, I'm gonna we can't do that. we can't look, do I mean, look at the glass, look at the glass. Yeah, but I drank it all because I was thirsty. Yeah, I wanted 12, you wanted 12, you wanted 3. Like, if we're going by, like, the, the rules of what you'd buy the most of, okay. I would buy shitloads of that fucking Moscato Dusty. I love it. It's so much fucking fun. I agree. Head on over to Different Drop and use code WFTP, you will get 10% off all of these little goodins. She's She's lining. 10% of $109. <laughs> yeah, I'm earning my keep. $10.90. $10.90. I'm earning it's my discount. keep. It's sub 100 bucks. It's huge. I'll be back. You've not seen the last of me. You thought you'd get me with this lineup. <laughs> you did. I'm sticking around. Alrighty, bye. See ya. Illy. <laughs>